The Nigeria Data Protection Bureau has disclosed the signing into law of the Data Protection Bill by President Bola Tinubu, and 500,000 jobs are projected to be birthed by this move. We shall be taking a look at this very new move by the President that would help create more jobs on the breakfast this morning. And of course, we'll be looking at what the Nigerian dailies are seeing on their headlines this morning as well on the segment we call Off the Press. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I am Maureen. And I am Nyam Gul. It's so good to have you this weekend. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> okay. I, I do hope that you have a kind of job that will give you that time to rest on, a, on Saturday and Sunday. But if you don't have that one, I do hope that at least on Sunday you can rest. Find time to rest any time that your weekend comes because some people their week ends in the middle of the week because that's when they have time to rest maybe they are off days and all that whenever that opportunity presents itself rest because your body needs the rest indeed well let's move straight to our very first hot topic our top trend in beg your pardon the first top trend in president tinubu considers extension of old naira notes deadline you would remember that a court had ruled that um, when all the governors went to court last year, a court said that um, December 31st, 2023 is when these old ones should be phased out. But the president has now extended it. But that raises a question, doesn't it? Well, well I, my question will be, uh, what's such a need for extension? Because it's almost going to be one year in December because this thing started in February uh, the court case came up and then the extension was done and it, they took it to December why would we need the old notes by December if uh, uh, if we have the wherewithal to print the new ones uh, because the assessment must have been done and we knew that we could print the new ones and then we know that electronic banking is the in thing right now so why do we really need the old notes Everybody will be asking the question, is it because some people have hoarded this kind of amount of money uh, in old Naira notes and they want it to be extended? And if they've hoarded this money, why can't they take it to the bank? Is it because it's illegal or what? Why do we really need the old notes? That's, that's what I'm just wondering. Well, one of the, that's a valid question, but another question that that raises is, is, it, is this going to override the order given by the Supreme Court? Because it was the Supreme Court that gave that order, extending it to 31st of December. Although um, it's an adversary report released by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, chaired by Senator Tokumbo Abiru, uh, and they are saying that a December 2024 deadline is preferred. December 2024. 20, uh, between now and December 2024, 20, what do they intend to do? Will they, if we keep using the money, at what point will they remove it from, from the economy, from the market, from everywhere, before we can say December 2024? If, if, if we can get the new ones, I don't see a reason why If we can get the new ones, Nyamgo, this is June, all right? So we're looking at six months' time, going by the old order given by the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. Now, I don't know how much of the new notes you have seen, because I haven't seen much of it. I don't know why. We haven't seen much of it. We don't see much of it at all. If you go to withdraw money, you probably see one note of the newly printed or re whatever one among the old notes. So you ask yourself, what happened? But another thing is that I. What's the quantity that was printed when this policy thing, was kicked yeah, Maureen, in? The, the funny thing is, I traveled recently when I went for my sister's burial, mm. and in the village, the predominant notes were the new ones. In the village? Yes. Amazing. The predominant ones. And, you know, I, it, was, it was really exciting. In Lagos, I was trying to <laughs> save new notes. It was just some fun I was having, trying to save new notes. And for like three months, I didn't even have up to 10,000 of the new notes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I went to the village, and what you are seeing will happen when you go to get money. Maybe out of 100,000, you're getting one new note is the reverse. In the that, villages. Yes. So they have more new notes than 
the old notes. And I don't, I don't know why that was. So maybe it's a Lagos thing, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's a regional thing, I don't know. But that, that was the case there. But the, the thing is, shouldn't we be moving away from, from um, paper money? Because a lot of people do transactions. The problem people had during <clears throat> that cash uh, crunch time, as we were putting it, mm -hmm. is the fact that transfers were not going. A mm -hmm. lot of e-transactions were not going because the infrastructure to uh, cater to those kind of, that kind of traffic is not there. So shouldn't they be looking at ways to make sure we have e-Naira, we have so many other channels that we can do, and we need less cash. If you ask me, we need less cash in the economy. So if we have these old notes, what would we be doing with the old notes? We don't even need to print as much as we printed the old notes. You know, it's been a long time since we've started talking about this cashless policy. But one thing you must take into account is that we have a large number of um, unbanked Nigerians, that's mm -hmm. one. We have a large number of people in the villages who cannot do e-transactions. You have to take them into account. That is a reality we have. Um, until literacy gets to the point where a large percentage of our populace can do e-transactions, we may not be able to phase out cash as, we quick, as much face, as you we think. We shouldn't phase out cash, um, uh, paper money. We shouldn't phase that out. But in reality, how many of us really need up to 50,000 Naira cash every day? I'm not sure a lot of people do. Because even the people in the village that we say, okay, they are unbanked and all that, they don't even really need this 50,000 Naira to do what with it? They, they don't do transactions like that. What they do mostly is save, however they are going to save it. So in Lagos already, th there is no place we will call a village as in, you know, in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And we have a population of 10% of the entire population of Nigeria. Don't forget so, those who do daily transactions in the villages, in the markets. Those yeah. who bring from their farms, they go to the different markets where they, they sell to those but who bring it to the there? city. It's cash. Okay, let's say, let's say 20 million people are out of these people that do this kind of daily transactions. Let's mm -hmm. say 20 people million people are out. You go to a place like Cross River, they, I'm not sure they have up to 10 million people or 15 million people in that, in that state. And half of those people are banked. They are not the unbanked people. Half of them are banked. You go to various states, at least half of them are banked. So if we need the cash, the people who really need this cash are those that are unbanked, which I wouldn't say are up to 50% of our population. Which means if we are printing the, the cash now and we decide to print 50% of what we used to print, mm -hmm. we should be able to have enough in our economy because the rest will be transactions, e-transactions. Mm -hmm. So I think they should be looking at the situation where you make a transaction and you don't get billed that high because that's one of the problems why people want cash. I make a transaction and they're taking tax for this, taking tax for that, taking tax for that. Yeah. Before yeah. you know what is happening, for every transaction you make, no matter how small, you're spending so much money. Even when they send money to you, you're still spending money. So they should be looking at things like that so that people will be comfortable to do the e-transactions, to, to use alternative means to pay and do business. But they're not looking at that. They're just thinking about bringing back old money to come and do what? Well, that is a question for them to answer. So for let's two years, to, they, the money will be... <laughs> let's move to our second top side. trending. Yeah, second think. top trending, Nigeria regains position as Africa's number one crude oil producer. Well, this is coming as a result of the country's increasing output to 1.3 million barrels per day in May from 1.1 million barrels per day recorded in the preceding month of April 2023. This is good news, isn't yeah. it? Just like having an uncle who is uh, highly placed, you can name drop anytime I'm related to this <laughs> person and somebody fears you. So we have regained our name. But apart from that, <laughs> does this uncle really take care of you? Does he, does he foot your bills? Does he do it? Oh my you? God. How much of that will Nigerians see as an improvement to their lives that we have in, increased? Just that in Africa, they will now respect us that, yeah, we are back to that place. So 
Let's name drop. Talking about those who don't just name drop, but enjoy the benefit <laughs> of this, you know, uh, uncle. Uh, countries like Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Kuwait declined, unfortunately. They declined, but these are people who are making good use of their oil money. Yeah. These are people who have been making good use of their oil money. Well, data sources uh, reveal that uh, sec well, this information came from OPEC, mm. um, and they got it from uh, secondary sources. They got it from secondary sources. We have to state that correctly. And so uh, according to the secondary sources that gave OPEC this information, Nigeria is leading in Africa. Um, and we are leading Angola, Equatorial Guinea, uh, and, and some other countries. In fact, Angola and Equatorial Guinea are now uh, the least with 56,000 barrels per day, according to OPEC. Nigeria, uh, our out output increase mainly, um, the output increase mainly in Nigeria, Iran, and yeah. Okay. Yes, Nigeria sells, and Iran who increased sells mainly. This oil? I, I don't know. I, I don't have insight into that. Who even sells this oil to other countries? Is it an NPC? Or Nigeria, or, or, the government or, itself. Or, or, through which medium and all that? Who sells it? Who gets the revenue? An NPC is no longer a government thing per se. It's a private entity right now. Uh, so who does this transaction? Where does the money go to? We, I, I don't even know. Well, the only thing we probably know for sure is that NNPC still has the monopoly of importing fuel, which is what independent marketers are seriously kicking against. And so a lot of dynamics playing out. Uh, lots of clarity will probably be uh, seen now in this oil and gas sector, because before now, it's no secret that it's been shrouded in secrecy. And the psyche of Nigerians are daily being traumatized by some of the news coming out with regards to all the dynamics in the oil and gas sector. Because as you have asked, who is actually doing the deal? Is it the NNPCL or is it the federal government? That is a major question. And then you begin to hear of oil thefts. You begin to hear of this trillion naira being taken or stolen by somebody or some huge billions of dollars being carried by somebody, or you hear about. And so our psyche, I get traumatized sometimes because it's you hear of all this and say, so we have all this money. So much money. And we only hear about when those who are in position are carrying it as it is hot. Mm -hmm. Then those of us, we just talk about it. Yeah. We just hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I heard, I can't be quoted on this, what I, I heard, uh, is that three people or three entities have been given the license to import oil because that monopoly is no longer there uh, for NNPC. But uh, one of them is NNPC. The second one is Dangote. I, I, I don't know yet what the third one is, but I didn't get the full okay, So story. that's an update. Yeah, that's an yes. update. So if, if that is true uh, and NNPC is the one going to bring the oil, Dangote that everybody's talking about is going to be another person and a third person. I don't know how the improvement will, will be uh, in the oil sector. I don't know why it's just three people or three entities that have been given these, uh, these uh, licenses to do what they need to do. But that shows, if it is true, that shows that Dangote Mills or Dangote um, Refinery may actually not function till 2024. I mean, why does he need to import oil? Mm. When That's why I said it's an refinery? update. So because we're told that by July, August, they should be selling. And from then, that like other refinery. people said, it, it probably will come up in 2024. So if this is true, uh, that means the people who talked about 2024 may be right. And what do we do? How do we fare <laughs> between now and 2024? It's a big question that we need to answer. So now, our, our oil has gone up. Well, yay, we should be clapping and all that. <laughs> but, okay, let's move away from oil, please. It's traumatizing, <laughs> like you said. <laughs> it's right, it flex. I was, I was just thinking this morning that when I started working in Plus TV, for instance, that's, that's, okay, that's the second place. This is the second place I'm working on the island. It used to always be on the mainland. The transport fare from Ojodu Bega to the VI mm. used to be 300 when I started here. That is late last year, 
300 naira. Today, you'll be begging for a thousand naira. Some people are charging a thousand too from a Jodu beggar. You do the math. You're coming to work and you're going back. The salary remains the same. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about plus TV now. I'm talking about generally people who are working. So from 300 naira, it has moved to at least 1,000 naira. That is just to come to work. Or let's say you're lucky because sometimes when you're going back, it's worse. So you're lucky that you're paying 1,000 naira here, 1,000 naira back for something you used to pay 300, 300 naira, naira here, four. 300 naira back. Yes. That means from 600 naira transportation, to you're 2, not paying 2,000 naira. And your salary remains the same. And you can't even blame the people who are the employers of labor because they have to buy fuel. They, have, they are also facing the same problem. So the salary may not even rise. And then you think about, okay, why not move from Ojudu Bega to, to Lekki? Can you even rent a house in Lekki? And then you live in Lekki somewhere, and maybe you don't have a car. From one estate to the other, before you get to the main road to get to the, to the, to the place of work, you need to take a drop. You spend the transport even more than someone is coming from the mainland. So things are getting complicated. Things are getting expensive. What is the way forward? Some jobs you cannot do remotely. You have to be there to do the job yourself. Yeah. So what can we do? Government should look into this and let's just begin to see the gains of this democracy. Let's begin to see the gains of this sack here, sack there, suspend here, suspend there. Now that you've gone pro. there, we need to see more sacking, more suspensions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because as I said, we are being traumatized by all this daily news about theft and graft and all of that. And so if we're going to see people being uh, brought to justice, being brought to book for all that they have done against our national psyche, it will help us find closure. And so we hope that some of these people or these people that have been called in and being questioned that it won't just end like that, that we're going to see real action. And we want to see more names you know, on the list of those suspended, the list of those um, arrested, and it shouldn't just stop at questioning. We want to see action because a lot has happened, so much impunity in the past eight years. We can't go on like this. And as I've said, if this new president wants to be taken seriously, he must be seen to be dealing with corruption and dealing with it squarely. And no then, selective justice. And then, yeah, you, you just hit it because some people are already beginning to say, that there's some sort of vendetta uh, in the sacking, the suspension, the probing that has been going on. Um, how we will just wake up one day and see that uh, the INEC chairman has been suspended. <laughs> has been suspended. It will never happen anyway. But if something is done, and we know for a fact that this is a clean thing, this is because uh, really this person deserves to go that way or to be suspended in that way, fine. But it's, it's, it takes more than just suspending somebody. It takes more to show the people that you're really doing it for their benefit. Mm -hmm. Because if people begin to suspect that you may be doing it because of personal reasons, personal vendetta and all that, it will still amount Talk to Talk becomes nothing. cheap. Yes. And that's what we've seen. Talk is cheap. I mean, nothing. look at what's happening in the U.S. Former President Donald Trump is in court. Mm -hmm. This is the second time. Yeah. And then you go to Britain. What about uh, Boris Johnson? Boris what Johnson. happened to him? And what was his crime, really? So we need to make ourselves to be seen seriously, to be taken seriously. As I said, we have to place respect on the name Nigeria. We have to place respect on our green passport. And to do that is to clean our house. There's a lot of dirt and a lot of cleansing that needs to be done. Can President Tinubu be able to do that? Can he do that? Does he have uh, the political will to do that? Does he have the moral standing to do that? These are some of the questions that have been asked in the polity. Can we see a change? So the renewed hope agenda must indeed be seen to be real. Yeah. Well, another concern we have uh, under the top trending is uh, the fact that the federal government is thinking about uh, introducing tuition in our federal universities or in our, in our tertiary institutions, tuition that is not ex in existence at this point. So you introduce tuition and then you give student loans. And then I was reading 
through that student uh, loans act, the, the law that is, enables people to get loan. And I saw, that's a personal opinion though, I saw the entire thing as just a scam, something that will not work for the people who need it. Mm. Because some of the provisions that I saw there were such that you just look at them and laugh. The people you need to bring as guarantors, the, the, the things that you have to, uh, the check box that you have to tick all the, for instance, if you have ever defaulted on a, a loan, so maybe, maybe these cash apps will give you a loan and you default in some way, you cannot get that. And even if you've never um, defaulted, if your father or your mother had mm -hmm. defaulted, you cannot get it. So if I have a res an irresponsible father, for instance, that goes and takes a loan, I want to go to school. He didn't even use that loan for my, for my benefit, mm -hmm. but I want to go to school. I cannot access that loan because my father defaulted on that loan. So why can the cash apps that we are calling, uh, uh, what, what do they even call them? They are, we are calling all sorts of names because of the way they, they, they get back their money. Mm -hmm. If they can give a loan without collateral, they can give a loan without knowing you. Just they know your beavers, they know your number, and that's it. They give you a loan. The federal government cannot do it. So I will need my father to be a saint, my mother to be a saint, <laughs> and myself to be a saint before I can go to school. It, it, it doesn't work for me. And then you have to bring um, a lawyer that has had experience for 10 years mm -hmm. after being called to bar. 10 years, or a judge, to the, or a civil servant of grade level 12. And if your mother or your father earns as much as 500,000 yes. naira annually, not monthly, annually, annually, that means your father or your mother Must should not earn be earning... less than 50,000. Exactly. I mean... Because 50,000, at 50,000, annually you should have 600,000. So you, di you are disqualified. So if your father is 50, earning 50,000, expect, okay, if your mother and father are earning 30,000 each, and the collective uh, salary gets to 600,000 annually, you still are disqualified. I do understand that a committee has been set up. Um, yeah. And that committee will meet next week. Hopefully that would give room for Nigerians to bring their input to this discussion because this is not something you take unilaterally. Uh, some have said, uh, well, questioned the move and described it as hasty, um, hoping that the president had consulted with the academia, you know, the universities, mm -hmm and even had some talks with students to get their pulse on this. So um, this obviously needs to be tinkered with. From yeah, but, what we've seen, it I'm just asked, needs to be tinkered it with. Has been if it's going to achieve the purpose that he said to achieve. Mm. It has set been out signed. To achieve. Now they're trying to explain, uh, well, this is not exactly like this. We are going to... But on paper, signed into law, these are the provisions. So you can't hold anybody for doing the contrary because uh, it was explained that it is going to be this way or that way. It is the way it is in, on the paper, signed into law, that it is going to work, except they're going to say that a law that has been signed now, from now to this, uh, September, that they say they will start the disbursement, from now to then, they will now change the law again. And if that happens... Can it not be repealed? By who? The same person who signed it. <laughs> and that will bring the question, why are you in such a haste to sign things into law, things that you may not have had the time to go through and really dotted all the, the I's and cross the T's? So if you are signing them fast, fast, are you looking for validation or you're telling us that you really had insight to these laws that you're signing or these bills that you're signing into law? Because if you didn't have, you have no moral standing to sign them because there, there could be documents that would put you in trouble. But if you had, then why would you repeal it in such a short time? So, well. Let's see what the President. committee will be doing next week. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, I don't know the mandate given to the committee, but I do know that there's a committee that's been set up and that they will be meeting next week. So we'll see, uh, we need further clarification because what we've seen so far, uh, <laughs> It leaves a lot to be desired, to be honest. Well, you're watching the Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be taking a little break to give you the weather report and then come back with the headlines of the press. <laughs> 